Okay. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, today, uh, we'll be talking about uh, watchfulness. Watchfulness or uh, to be ready. Uh, and we're, we, we ask some questions. Anyone remember some of the questions from the email? Anyone uh, remember any of the questions from the email that we sent? Help me out. Those online, you can unmute yourself and just uh, say whatever you want. Sorry, when I didn't get uh, that email, so I have no idea. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. ممكن نفتح الايميل you can cheat no problem <laughs> I'm not expecting you to memorize the email <laughs> Okay 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 very good Yeah what, what's the uh, what's the question What are you waiting for Huh Ready for what so these questions are very important. Like we say ready, and then like ready for what? Okay, be watchful. Sure, watchful, watch what? The sky, the uh, like people around me, watch what? So, so sometimes or many times we are just keda, yani, uh, going with the, with the crowd, going with the flow. Uh, you know, there is uh, an Arabic saying, Zay eh? Have you ever heard Tor Allah Barsimo? Have you ever heard of this? All right? It's like, the um... hell <laughs> Yes, that's the one. Maybe, yes. And yeah, just someone is just going, going. Not knowing anything, just eating, drinking, and living, and doing whatever other people are doing. People say, oh, this is funny, let's do it. People say, this is exciting, let's do it. People say, let's go to the beach, I'm with you. People say, like, okay, let's go to church. Oh, definitely, that uh, sounds like something holy, something like a blessing. Why not? I would like to do that too, right? And as soon as people change their mind, it's like, oh, okay, people change them. I might as well change. So uh, <laughs> today, today we'll talk about that a bit in uh, a lot of details. Um, I'm going to read with you what we sent um, in the email. It's uh, 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, and Second Timothy is considered the epistle that St. Paul wrote, uh, the last epistle that St. Paul wrote before uh, he was headed, before his head was cut, before they judged him. So if anything, this would be the last few words in his life. Second Timothy chapter 4. So imagine this guy, uh, St. Paul, in a prison and ready to be, say, for example, execute, uh, executed tomorrow morning. And he's writing this to Timothy. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful. You be watchful. In all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of evangelists. 
fulfill your ministry. So I'll just pause here. Maybe if we get a chance or time, we will take the next three verses because they're heavy. So we'll just stop here. So St. Paul is giving two important things here for Timothy. If we follow chapter three at the end, actually, he tells him, um, in chapter three, he tells him, um, continue the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them. And from the childhood, you know, the Holy scripture, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So the number one thing, he wants him to be steadfast in reading scripture. Okay. And what tradition and the handing over of faith that was given him through his uh, mother, through his grandmother, and through St. Paul. Right? So these are very important. And then in chapter four, that's when he tells him, okay, now, you know, you grew up in, in, in the house. You, you, you know how to pray. You know how to read the scripture. You know how to come to church. You know how to fast. You... Now, what is this all good for if you don't put it to work? Okay. And the work here, he's telling him, I, I charge you before Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is getting, now St. Paul is saying, Jesus Christ is a judge. Okay. Uh, and he is, he's the judge and he's victorious who will judge the living and the dead. He's victorious over death. Uh, and he is a king. Okay. So, what St. Paul is saying here is that if I don't have this, um, if I don't have this goal, seeing Jesus Christ as a judge, then I can do whatever I want. No one is going to judge me. Right? If I don't see Jesus Christ as victorious, then if, if, uh, if I fall into temptation, if I fall into sin, and I, I lose hope, then I have, I, I lose hope. Uh, if I don't see Jesus Christ as a king who has a kingdom, then where am I going after death? Right? So basically, first is first, is that when I come to church in, in a relationship with Jesus Christ, I have to recognize these three important things about him. Is that, he is the judge, he is victorious, and he is a king. If I don't see this in Jesus Christ, then eh, anything goes. Okay? And that's why we're going to see accountability is very important. Like at the end of uh, verse 5, he tells him, fulfill your ministry. That means like, fulfill, that means you have an assignment and you have to to um, to complete your assignment and you have to report back okay life is not just a time that passing by we are accountable and we are accountable to higher authorities as well as accountable to um, authorities uh, among humans set by God himself we're accountable to, to parents, we are accountable to husband and wife, accountable to the society, I'm accountable to my father of confession, I'm accountable to authorities, accountable to authorities uh, and to rulers. St. Paul talks about that in, um, uh, in Romans chapter 13, I think. He says like, you know, you have to obey uh, the law. You have to obey rulers because these are appointed by God for your own good. If you don't, then you, you think like the, the rulers or the governor uh, is governing just because like that. No, it's given to him by God. So what I'm trying to say here is that 
before you start doing anything, before you think of anything, one thing is important. Jesus Christ will hold me accountable, will uh, give me victory, will reward and is rewarding me uh, his kingdoms because his kingdom starts from here, from earth. So Jesus Christ is a judge. Jesus Christ is a victorious and Jesus Christ is a king. Um, so this goal has to be in front of our eyes so that we can be watchful, we can be ready, and we know why we are ready, what we're ready for, and our life here, where it's going. Okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, many people say, well, uh, if Adam and Eve, if Adam and Eve did not sin, what would have happened? Right? Uh, Saint Athanasius in his uh, book uh, on the incarnation, he talks about this and he says uh, that God created, created Adam and Eve so, uh, and put them in the paradise for some time so that if they pass the test, they will be eternally with God, okay? And if they don't pass the test, then God will give, that's why God is giving them another chance. So basically, here on earth, what is happening to us right now, this is our second chance already. <laughs> the first chance was Adam and Eve and they messed it up. Now we are in our second chance. So that's why uh, we have to be very mindful. You know, nowadays they, they talk a lot about mindfulness. Mindfulness. If, I, if I'm doing all these exercises, yoga, or like concentrating or focusing, being mindful, and Jesus Christ is not there, it's wasting time. It's wasting time. Okay. So, um, the first two, here now he's going to start to give him some practicalities. Now he set the goal, now practicalities. Preach the word, preach the word. Talk to other people, preach the word that includes talking, uh, behaving, treating people, how I treat people, how I look after people. Uh, how I, I conduct myself in front of people, how I talk about Jesus Christ in front of people. Okay? So, this is preaching. Be ready in season and out of season. Here, it does not mean like, uh, be ready in season and out of season, like anytime you just go and start preaching. No. I have to be uh, watchful. I have to be ready to see what the person need. But being ready in season and out of season, that's for me. Because sometimes uh, we go and serve moody, based, based on my mood. Uh, today I'm in the mood to serve. Tomorrow, uh, we'll see. Uh, can you commit with us? Ah, I'll see. I'll let you know in the morning if I can come or not, depending on my mood. Very Egyptian thing to do, right? Uh, uh, I think it has a term, no? Does it have a term in Egyptian? Like you have a mood? Uh, or someone waking up in the morning and you know, like, Arif. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard of this? Seriously? Yeah. Yeah, people wake up in the morning. Arif. I don't want to come. Like, just leave me alone. What do you mean, Arif? We all wake up many times, Arifin. <laughs> so, like, Arif, it means like uh, waking up. Um, yeah, wrong side of the bed, basically. So we all do many times. But that, what St. Paul is saying here, that is not an excuse. 
that is not an excuse for me not to pray my prayer in the morning. Not an excuse for me not to read the Bible. So be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just, uh, so basically, I need to prepare myself and prepare others in, in preaching. And preaching is not just about others, but preaching starts with me. The time I wake up in the morning, I decide what I'm doing today. Um, I have a program. I have a set program. I have a prayer. I have a Bible. I have a quiet time with Jesus. I have uh, my matanias. I have a liturgy. I have work to do. I have to go to my job. I have a career, right? That is preaching too. Sometimes we think like preaching is like when I come to church or when I speak about Jesus only. No, when I go to my work for my career, that is preaching too. Why not? Um, so be prepared and ready to, to preach in season and out of season all the time. So... Um, uh, after this, um, we have to uh, be careful not to pick what I like, like what I said. Sometimes even we do this with the Bible. We have our own Bibles or, or Gospels, I would say other words, our own Gospels. You know, I like to read certain passages. I like the comforting one. I like, you know, and sometimes even the one I like, I focus on a, a verse that makes more sense to me and leave everything else, right? For example, like uh, in Luke chapter 12, I think we all like this verse. Do not fear little tr uh, flock, right? For your father... Uh, is his pleasure is to give you the kingdom and we all happy about this verse great this is a great start for my day and i go and, and I, I have no fear right but if you continue afterwards right it's uh, if you want to look it up luke 12 verse 32 check the verse after it if anyone has it open what does it say Sell, sell what you have and give alms, alms. Ah, now we have, we have something here, God, you know. Uh, yeah, do not fear, but you want me to give uh, my money? Like, no, 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 this is, I, I would stick just to the first half of this, okay? Be ready in season and out of season, teaching and do everything. So uh, another example also, there are so many examples. Uh, we love this one. Come to me, all you who are labors and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, right? And we're <sighs> rest. We're resting. The Lord is going to give us rest. But continue the verse. What the verse says after that, take my yoke upon you. Now we're going to take yoke. I don't want to take up anything on me like you said. So many times we find ourselves like, like to, to pick and choose. I like this and I don't like this. You know, I like to come to church, but I like the last part of liturgy. Right? I, I like to serve, but I don't like to prepare for service. Right? I like to read my Bible, but I want just to listen to, to a sermon. So I like to pick and choose what comforts me. But St. Paul is saying, no, 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 no. You have a goal, Jesus Christ. You have to do it. You have a plan. So <clears throat> uh, it's important to stick to the whole uh, gospel. Um, in the same verse, 
Um, in the same verse, um, our, our St. Paul continues, uh, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears. This is what we were talking about. According to my own desire, I want to pick and choose what I like in the verse, which verse I like, and I don't, so itching ears. Itching ears, what does itching ears mean? What does it mean to have itching ears? You know, when when someone is is talking and you move and, and you itch, like you you scratch your ears, right? You don't hear anything, or like you don't hear it well. It, it, selective hearing, is up together. Very good. Yes. How are you, Amir? <clears throat> yeah. So selective hearing. So this is what we were talking about, is the selective hearing of the word of God itself. They will heap up for themselves teachers. Uh, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Fables like illusions. Have you heard the spiritual illusions here sometimes? Okay, I'll give you some examples here or there. <clears throat> I'll give you some examples. Let's just wait for... Very good. Let me give you like some examples of uh, spiritual illusions. <clears throat> I come to church and I feel blessing. I go out, I curse and lie and do everything else. Right? As long as I'm fasting and I'm make, making sure that um, I'm making sure that my uh, my food does not have any uh, milk or meat, I'm good. I feel good about myself. Ah, oh, I'm so holy. I'm, I'm, I came to church today. Right. Or I come, um, uh, I come to church and I like I uh, I go sorry uh, I go around and I, I want to kiss especially nowadays with with all the icons around like and we say don't kiss the icons uh, and I kiss all the icons I don't mean to point any fingers but I, I seriously like we I go I want to kiss the icons. And some people take it like, if I kiss, if I don't touch the icon, if I don't kiss the icon, I'm not getting any blessing. The blessing is that we get from the life of the saints. When we live the life of the saints, we learn from their life and we uh, learn about their faith and we live uh, similarly in faith, not exactly what they do. So we have to be careful like um even nowadays i like sometimes yani uh, uh, unless like i do i come to church and i do like a uh, hundred matanias like i feel like i didn't do anything uh, jesus christ said uh, the true worshipers are those who worship um with truth in truth and spirit right so uh, if I do five or ten matanias with like uh, a heart that is um, filled with love and offering it to Christ, then isn't that stronger than just doing hundred matanias like with no thinking, with no? So uh, there is a similar term uh, uh, referring to this. Sometimes it's also referred to by saying, "Have you ever heard of emotional spirituality?" Like I do certain things, ritual things that makes me feel uh, good about myself, good about my relationship with God. And if I don't do them, then that means I did not uh, connect with God. So we have, this is what St. Paul is saying here. 
and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Be watchful. Am I being a hypocrite? Am I being uh, straying away from the truth? Yani St. Paul here uh, gave us uh, two extremes. St. Paul gave us uh, uh, two extremes. The first extreme is like when I pick what I want, basically which, whichever verse I want, and uh, I'm picking and choosing. And the other one is like uh, uh, more of I, I want to do just the outside of the worship without the, the spirit of the worship. Um, so, and, and this is where he concludes and says, be watchful, be watchful. Be watchful of what? Be watchful of what? Of everything that I said to you since I started um, uh, listing things here. Uh, be watchful be watchful in all things and St. Paul mentioned so many things before that and we said uh, what is my goal we said Jesus Christ right to do what to preach the word and be ready in season out of season uh, and be careful because the time will be coming when they will not endure sound doctrine, right? And the itching years, we spoke about that. Be watchful and endure afflictions. This is the last part here. Endure affliction. Do the work of, uh, of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Be accountable. Be accountable. And... Um, Endure afflictions. And, and, and St. Paul continues in verse 6. He says, uh, I'm ready. Uh, sorry, not verse 6. Actually, in verse 9. Um, Be diligent to come to me quickly. The mass has forsaken me and love the present world. Many times we, we are doing all of these things, but we don't endure afflictions. And I feel like I'm, I'm bored. Like I did all of that, Abuna. You can go in. It started to drizzle a bit. If you guys cannot handle it, we can go in just in the in the gym. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. I'll open it. But just have your uh, your your masks uh, ready. Sorry, guys, online. Uh, you have to endure with us for a bit. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to pause the... Let me see. I'll pause. Okay. So, uh, yeah, sorry. We had to move in because of the rain, but that's okay. Now everyone with the masks. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, I think I, I didn't have much, uh, just another few minutes here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was good. So uh, as in Paul, uh, basically here is in verse five is saying to Timothy, endure afflictions and i think this is where i think most of us are are challenged with this is where most of us are challenged with is um we lose hope and this is where we start um the despairing or losing hope. And he gave him an example of Demas, one of the apostles or, or students of St. Paul, right? So um, 
sometimes we wake up and say like, or like it comes to a point where I feel I'm bored. I'm bored of this. I've done everything. I go to church. I fast. I, I pray. And I felt God. I felt God. Uh, truly. Truly. Like I, feel, like I feel God in my prayers. I feel God in my work. I feel God in, um, in my reading of Bible. I feel God in service and everything. But after a while, like, but I'm getting bored. Like, is there anything else? Is there even uh, like a meaning, uh, something even more meaningful spiritually? Right? So St. Paul here is telling uh, uh, St. Timothy, um, uh, be careful with that. Endure afflictions. Make sure that always you redefine goals spiritually, redefine goals in my life, right? As soon as I find myself uh, hitting this stage, I need to go and uh, speak to Abuna. So I need to speak to Abuna about this because this is uh, a concern that my spiritual life, my spirituality is kind of like taking a dip. And many times we feel like things are going downhill. Uh, and like, maybe I'll wait a bit. No, I think it's important to be watchful of this. It's important to be watchful of uh, our spirituality. Uh, God, many times um, when things like this happen, um he he means it for us to grow stronger you know just like you know um when when i think most of us have you ever tried the bicycle like a bike and like those training wheels right and dad will uh, will put the training wheels but at some point he takes off the uh, the, the training wheels and then he 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 touches you from the back or like the seat and, and giving you a push. And then without you noticing, like all of a sudden you're like pedaling alone and you don't feel your, your dad behind. And it's like you start, you start kind of like stressing out, well, what's going on? am I going to fall? Am I, something is going to happen. So God does the same thing with us. He, he leaves us sometimes just on our own. Okay to give us more confidence that I am around and, and you can still trust in me, even if, if you don't feel me uh, giving you those training wheels or you, even if you don't feel me like uh, putting my hands on your shoulder, supporting you. So this is what St. Paul uh, concludes here uh, in, in, in verse five. Um, verse six and seven, I'll go through them really quick, even though I didn't want to. I wanted to jump in a bit, but they're beautiful. I'll just conclude with them. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved uh, his appearing. So St. Paul is reminding us again that Christ is the judge. And he's saying that I'm pouring my life uh, willingly. You know, uh, all of us, we're going to die. It's a good time to walk in. <laughs> we're all going to die. <laughs> right? But St. Paul here is saying, I'm willing to die. I'm, I'm, I'm dying willingly for Christ. I'm pouring out my life. Uh, because we said he's about to, to be executed. 
Um, and he says, I fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And God is crowning him. He's not saying that I'm being crowned because I did anything. But God gave, giving me this crown as a gift. God is giving me this crown as um, a gift. Um, so he's reminding him, don't lose faith. You will be bored that sometimes in your spiritual life, yes. Sometimes you will be moody, yes. Sometimes you will be arif, yes. <laughs> but, but we all go through this, okay? Have that system. Set your goals every day in the morning. Um, uh, you read the gospel and take some like parts of a verse and not the others, yes but take the rest of the verse so that I can benefit from that. It's important to, to endure the afflictions, to see how God uh, is glorified in those afflictions, um, <clears throat> rather than just pick the easy uh, spirituality. Let me conclude with you uh, with what we had in the Bible study this past Monday. We're reading... Uh, the life of Joshua. And when you read the life of Joshua, uh, you read the first thing that Joshua did was crossing the Jordan. And then he goes into Jericho. And then after Jericho, he goes into Ai. And then after Ai, he meets five kings. Right? They come down on him. And he wins. After the five kings, another seven kings with uh, with innumerable uh, number of, of army comes down on him. Right? You feel the same. Like in our spiritual life, you feel like, oh, I feel like spiritually charged. And then as soon as you say that, right? you start like getting one problem after the other like, Come on, I'm being a good kid, God. Why are you doing this to me? Right? This is what, this, this is what happened with Joshua. Joshua uh, went from meeting one city into meeting seven, into meeting uh, more and more armies, and not from just one side, from different sides coming at him. Um, so... If we are in spiritual warfare, things are never going to get easy in terms of like the, the, the raging of war. But in terms of fighting, I will start more and more depending on God. By following what we spoke about today, um, by setting the goal, Jesus Christ uh, himself to be... Um, the judge in my life and the judge in the second coming and he is the victorious and the king if i have that as a goal then i'm living for something in this life okay um be ready in season and out of season be careful of uh the itching ears and i want to listen to what i like only um and uh, be careful with uh, turning the truth and, and turning to fables. Fables, and we spoke about uh, illusions, spiritual illusions, and emotional spirituality. Uh, and being watchful in all things to endure all afflictions and be accountable. Fulfill your ministry. That means I was, I'm given assignment, I have to be accountable. Accountability is is very important thing in a spiritual life. Okay. Um, we pray that we all um, get to be ready and to be watchful in our life. Glory be to God in this church forever and ever. Amen. Uh, questions? Uh, online people? I don't know how you guys are doing. Are we still? Yeah, I lost them, I think.
Anyone online? Yeah, Fabuna, we're still here. Oh, okay, very good. Good, good. Uh, any any questions from online or here with us? How is the rain outside stopped? Not really. Okay. Um, okay. Quiz. I stopped the 